Hey, let's jump back into gyroscopic instruments, focusing on the heading indicator this time. We'll start with its markings and how it helps pilots figure out their desired direction. Then, we'll see how it leverages gyroscopic principles to function. Lastly, we'll check out its errors pilots should be aware of. The heading indicator features a compass card that rotates whenever the airplane changes direction. Notice the small plane symbol on the instrument face, it always points to the aircraft's current heading, displayed based on a 360-degree azimuth. Just a quick reminder, the heading of your aircraft is the direction its longitudinal axis and nose are pointing to. The heading indicator's compass card resembles a compass rose. The dial is marked with numbers at intervals of 3, denoting angles from magnetic north in 30-degree increments, measured clockwise. The final zeros in degrees are omitted. For instance, the number 3 represents a 30-degree angle from magnetic north. The letters N, E, S, and W represent the four cardinal directions. Each long line on the scale stands for 10 degrees, and the short lines are 5 degrees. Usually, figuring out the heading for small turns of 10 or 20 degrees is no big deal. But when you're dealing with larger angles, especially if your current heading isn't a cardinal direction, it can get tricky. That's where those little orange triangles around the compass card come into play. They're spaced out every 45 degrees and tell you the angles to your current heading, whether it's to the left or right. You can think of them as relative bearings. These markers are super useful for big turns or navigating tricky angles. Let's use 45 degree marker as an example. Say you want to turn 35 degrees, your new heading can be found by counting two lines, including both long and short ones, next to the 45 degree marker, inside the imaginary arc between current heading and the marker. For a 55 degree turn, your new heading would be 10 degrees outside the arc. Some heading indicators come with a handy heading bug to make things even simpler. You can adjust the heading bug using the knob at the bottom. This allows you to mark your intended heading before making a turn. Then, all you have to do is line up the symbolic airplane with the heading bug. The heading bug also helps pilots spot any small deviations from the desired heading more easily, so they can make corrections right on time. Together with the relative bearing markers, a 55-degree left turn would be just a piece of cake. Don't get fooled by the compass card thinking it's just like a regular magnetic compass. It's quite different. A heading indicator doesn't rely on magnetism or sense the Earth's magnetic field automatically. Instead, it works based on gyroscopic principles. There's a knob at the bottom, opposite the heading bug knob if you have one, that lets you manually adjust the compass card. So, before you start taxiing out from your parking spot, make sure the symbolic plane lines up with the direction indicated on the magnetic compass. The heading indicator, also known as a directional gyro, utilizes a vertically spinning gyroscope. Operating on the principle of rigidity in space, the gyroscope maintains its orientation in the vertical direction while the instrument case rotates around it in response to the airplane's motion. Heading indicators are typically powered by vacuum, check the POH or AFM if not sure. The vacuum pump draws air to spin the gyro against the gyro vanes. While the gyro rotates along a vertical plane, the main gear that drives the compass card is horizontally oriented, and the relative position of the compass card to the gyro remains unchanged regardless of the aircraft's attitude. This setup actually makes sense when you consider the fact that the aircraft's nose moves sideways due to yawing motion. Yaw is just a fancy way of saying the airplane rotates about its vertical axis. This rotation is clearer when viewed from the top.
We mentioned that a spinning gyro remains in its rotating plane due to the principle of rigidity in space. However, this assumes that no other forces are acting on it. In reality, there are always some forces at play, such as friction, which is ever-present. This friction causes the gyro to slowly drift from its set position as a result of precession. Consequently, the indicated heading may deviate from the magnetic heading. A more noticeable error in the heading indicator stems from the rotation of the Earth. Since the Earth completes a full cycle every 24 hours, the heading indicator can accrue an error of up to 15 degrees for every hour of operation. To keep things on track, it's a good idea to realign the heading indicator with the magnetic compass roughly every 15 minutes. That wraps up our discussion on the heading indicator. In our next video, we'll look at the last gyroscopic instrument, turn coordinator. Stay tuned!